thus far, we have looked at many different ways of dealing with uh, data sets in the form of either data frames or in the form of tables. And we saw specifically how we can use functions like select and filter and mutate to uh, subset data sets in very intelligent ways. And in the last class, we saw the notion of uh, tidy data. And then we saw how uh, operating on tidy data is a lot more convenient on uh, than operating on data that is not organized in a tidy way. And then we saw functions uh, like uh, gather and separate to uh, either bring data that is tidy into a form that is not tidy into a form that is tidy or alternately taking data that is tidy, uh, that is tidy and then uh, casting it in a form that is suitable maybe for presentation, like in the form of uh, more friendly tables than actually tidy data is. Okay, So tidy data, as we've already seen, is data that is uh, in a form that is easy to process. Okay, And quite often, data that is in a form that is easy to process may not necessarily be the best way to represent the data for visual consumption. Okay, and vice versa. Data that is good for visual consumption may not be actually in a form that is easy to process, and hence we, are, uh, we talked about tidy data. So in this uh, week's class, we'll be looking at uh, further aspects of data wrangling. Okay, uh, so first of all, let's take a case study of how to take some data which is not tidy and then tidy it up. Okay, so uh, you know that we've been installing the package, we've been loading the package uh, through the library command or otherwise, uh, we've been loading the package tidyverse and tidyverse is a package that actually loads many other packages uh, which belong in the so-called tidy universe, tidy data universe. Okay, that's why they call the package tidyverse. Okay, and uh, one of the package, uh, one of the data sets there it's uh, one of the packages that gets loaded when you load uh, tidyverse is a package called tidy r and this tidy r package has some data sets and one of the data sets they have uh, it has is the world health organization data set on tuberculosis okay uh, so that uh, data is already available once you load tidyverse tidyverse in turn loads tidy r and within tidy r there is this uh, thing called who or WHO data, right? So if you just type who, you get information, right? It shows you that who has uh, this uh, data, for example, country name, and then ISO 2, ISO 3. As you can see from this clearly, those are just alternate ways of representing a country, which is the AF and Afghanistan. This is a, a two, two letter, a two character abbreviation for a country. This is a different standard, which is a three character abbreviation for a country. And then of course you've got year, uh, which is uh, sort of, uh, we're already familiar with this from examples from the previous week. And then we seem to have many other columns uh, like uh, new SPM 014, new SPM 1524, etc, etc, etc. Of course, we can already see that there are many uh, NAs and so on. Uh, it turns out that this data is actually pretty untidy. Uh, here are many more attributes like uh, along the lines of new SP uh, and, and so on. So we see many of these. Okay, so of course, as you can see, this has a lot of missing values. It's got redundancy, like we already saw that the country code is represented in three different ways. And it's got some odd codes or, you know, things like new underscore SP underscore M14, not clear what they actually mean. Okay, uh, so this is what we are seeing. There is redundancy, there are missing values, and then it looks like uh, these things look like values uh, and not attributes, right? So if, in fact, if you go in and take a look at it closer, you'll see that each of these columns has some numbers uh, and, uh, and so on. So for example, uh, so what we are going to do now is essentially to uh, take these columns and uh, you know these actually are uh, actually not columns, really speaking, but they are actually variables. So for example, it's going to say for Afghanistan, for the year 1980, the value of this particular attribute, and we'll shortly see what that is, uh, this particular attribute represents some kind of classification of tuberculosis data and how many cases were there, okay? So that's really what is in the data. Of course, here it's NA, but where it's not NA, you will actually see a particular number, which represents the number of cases 
of tuberculosis that occurred in Afghanistan for this particular classification, right? So as we did before, what we would like to do is to take all of these variables and put them into columns. That's what we'd like to do. Uh, so here, uh, what we are saying is, uh, we are using the gather function like before, and we are using the colon operator to say, take all of these columns, starting from new underscore sp underscore m0142, new rel underscore f65. Okay, so take all of those columns, create a new column called cases, and put, uh, the uh, you know, create a new column called key, and take the column called cases and put that as the value, right? So now what you'll get is, uh, if you look at the data, what you'll get looks, oh, okay, uh, what you'll get actually will have uh, Afghanistan, 1980, and then new underscore SP underscore M014 and the number of cases. And then you'll have Afghanistan 1980, uh, the next column, and then the number of cases and so on. Okay, this is very similar to what we had done in the previous example. Okay, so now uh, we've got the keys, which happen to be those, actually now the column names, right? The, the Each of these column names became a new column called key. So we've got all of these. So what we could try and do is to just try and count how many of each of these there are. And that's what we are doing here. So if you do a who one and then pipe it to count key, and you see this result, right? So it shows you approximately that for this key, new underscore EP underscore F014, there were 1,032 cases and so on for everything else. What we are seeing here is all of these numbers are almost, uh, almost equal, very close to uh, each other. So what that tells us is really, yeah, these should be, uh, these should actually be, uh, you know, the, the not individual columns, but they should actually be part of the rows, that this is also data, all right? And uh, so what this, for example, if you look at the first row, what this tells you is uh, for Afghanistan, you've got, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, if you add up the new underscore EP underscore F014, you've got a total of 1,032 rows occurring in this in this entire data set. And that seems to be the same for all of these, right? So that again, of course, you can always look at the description of the data set by doing question mark who, right? Question mark WHO, and then it'll tell you what the meaning of each of these uh, variables is. And then of course, it becomes very clear to us that these are not really columns and they should become part of the rows. Let us now go and take a closer look at what these things really mean. We can look at the documentation and see what's going on here. So in order to look at the documentation, all you have to do is to type in a uh, question mark and then uh, see the documentation, right? So in the, if you take a look at the original WHO data, so you could always do question mark WHO, question mark who, and then it'll tell you what these values actually mean because these are names of columns in the original data. So the description would tell you what's going on. So if you look at the description, uh, you see uh, I take an example here and uh, use this example to describe what's going on. Okay, so the new tells us that whatever count is corresponding to that column, uh, it corresponds to new uh, t to tuberculosis cases or old cases, right? So the value here could be either new or old, okay? So the underscore simply is separating one part of this from the next part, uh, and the next part of it says EP, right? And this tells you what type of tuberculosis it was okay uh, so for example rel says that it was a relapse ep says that it was extra pulmonary sn says that it was smear negative that means it's the kind of uh, tb that would not be detected by a smear test and sp is a smear positive that is it's the kind that can be detected by a smear, a smear test okay so that's what this part is and uh, the f that part uh, talks about the gender so you will find that you've got either f or m uh, in that particular place and the final thing tells you the age group to which these cases belong. So 1524 essentially says between the ages 15 and 24. The different values for these are 0, 14 is ages 0 to 14, 1524 is 15 to 24, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so that's really what this column means. Okay, so it might be a good idea because we would want to uh, uh, presumably perform analysis by each of these categories separately. So putting all of the names together in one field is kind of misleading. So we might want to pry them apart. 
okay uh, but of course there's one thing uh, so what we would uh, like to do is to separate it right so uh, if you have new underscore ep underscore f 1524 you actually want to separate that into four different columns new ep f 1524 as the, as the age range 1524 right so you want to separate it like that so that you will then be able to group by each of these and then perform more detailed analysis but before we do that one thing we realize if we go back to our previous slide is uh, you've got these columns and there are uh, there are many more values here in fact it will be better if I jump up a little bit more uh, and if you look at all the attributes here you see that you've got new underscore SPM 2534 so now we know that this is new cases and it's the kind uh, which can be detected by a smear it's of males in the range age range 25 to 34 so we've got all of these columns only thing is uh, when you go all the way down you see that some of these column names have uh, there's no underscore underscore is missing in some of them so for example you'll just see new rel without the underscore right so that can create some problems because what we want to do is to separate out the columns properly right so what we'll try and do is to uh, clean up clean up the data that way right so we'll see what we're going to do here so what we are doing here is we are saying who one is who gather new sp uh, that is we are taking all these cases and we have created this was the initial processing we did we took all these columns uh, and then made it actually uh, made a uh, uh, you know uh, the converted that into actual data values and created a new column cal called cases which has the numbers and we did na.rm equals true because we saw that there was a lot of there were a lot of missing values so that was fine we did that and then uh, we counted it to see that well uh, to confirm that these should indeed we actually be uh, on the row and not in the column position and then we saw the description of the, uh, the data set you know the description of the column itself how it breaks up so we saw all of that so now what we are trying to do is for the uh, values for which the underscore is missing between new uh, new underscore thing so you see many values which are new rel with the underscore missing so what we are trying to do is to simply replace the column names by using the mutate function you're seeing mutate key equals and there is another package called string r which we will look at later and that has a function called str underscore replace so we are basically saying if a column name, uh, if a value, not a column name, uh, if the uh, if within the key column, you've got a value that is new rel, replace it with new underscore rel. Okay, so all the values we are replacing now with new underscore rel if the value was simply new rel, because we just looked at the data and saw that uh, the, these are the places where underscore is missing, right? Now, why do we want to get the underscore into place? We want to get the underscore in place because as we said earlier from our prior description, we want to pry apart all of these into separate values. In other words, we want the new in one column, the rel in one column, the m in one column, and then the age range in a separate column because we might want to group by any of these things. If they're all smashed together into one single value, then that will become very difficult. So that's what we are doing here. So this is also part of cleaning up. So we see that here. Uh, and then now here is where so what you will end up having is you will have uh, like we said earlier you will have it like this right you will have new underscore and then the kind of tuberculosis underscore the gender and the age group right so as a first step what we will do is we will split this into three parts and that is what we are going to see right here right so we are saying separate this the key whatever is the value in the key separate it into three parts a uh, new type and sex age right those are the three parts uh, which are separated by the separator underscore okay so if you do this you will end up now with the who3 will have three columns right it will end up with three columns meaning what was earlier one column called key now it will become three columns called new type uh, and the sex age okay new would tell us whether it's new or old in fact it turns out that all the records have new and we will later eliminate it right but then type it will tell you what type of tuberculosis it is and sex age right now will have the combination of the gender 
and the age group to which a case belongs. And we are saying use the underscore character as the separator. Okay, so now we want to count out, uh, you know, the, the news which are there. And it turns out that all the columns have new, uh, you know, all the rows have new in that particular column. Uh, so we can actually remove it. Uh, and while we are doing that, what we are doing is we are removing the column called new because that column, uh, every row has the same value for that column. So it does not, it's not adding any information. And then we are also removing the redundant uh, columns corresponding to the country name. Remember the country name had uh, Afghanistan and then it also had AF and then it had AFG. Right, those are the ISO 2 and the ISO 3 names. Uh, you know, for our data set, one country name is sufficient. So we are going to we are going to just keep the complete country name and get rid of these columns. Right. So here we are again continuing our cleaning process by removing some columns which exist. Okay. And these were two redundant columns which we are removing. Essentially, all of these columns are in some sense redundant. We are getting rid of them. So that cleans up the whole process. And then remember from our earlier step. We had sex age, which is uh, when we did this separation, we put sex and age into one single column, right? That was because you had new underscore EP underscore F1524. The F1524 is female it's in the range 1524. They were together without any underscore separating them, okay? So that is why in this particular column called sex age, you're going to have uh, values like F1524 or M014, things like that. So now we need to separate that also out into a gender and an age range separately. And that's what we are doing here, right? We are saying who five is who four pipe separate sex age, which is the name of the column into two separate columns called sex and age. And sep equals one, which is, which says basically separate after one character, right? You had F, 1524. So we are saying put F into the column called sex and put 1524 into the column called age. If you want, you could call it age range to make it clear because it's not really the age. 1524 is 15 Okay. And we don't want to separate it out into 15 and 24 separately because all the data is in those particular specific ranges. So any kind of analysis we want to perform, we'll have to perform within those ranges. So we'll keep the range as it is. Okay, so after you do this, you do who five and you get everything separately. Now, what we did in the prior slides is to simply show you step by step the cleaning process. In reality, you will do everything in one shot, right? Uh, so you'll say first gather uh, all of these columns into uh, into one particular column called code. Uh, okay, and then we're going to say mutate that particular column and replace new rel with new underscore rel and then separate code which is separate out new and uh, the var and the sex age and then set, you know remove the redundant columns so select all columns other than these using the minus signs removing those columns and then finally separating out the sex age into sex and age okay so that is our complete cleaning process. If we want, we can assign the result, of course, into another data frame, uh, another table, and then use that for any further processing and analysis. We haven't done that here, but that's what we would have to do.